Thank you. So let me uh, thank again to the organizers uh, for inviting me. I'm very, uh, uh, I'm very glad that I'm in a good company of uh, Egyptian diabetologists uh, and also my uh, long-standing friends, uh, Irina Vlasenko and Tanya Milenkovic from IDF and from Diabetes Community of Europe. So uh, I uh, will try to do my best regarding my topic on diabetes technology, which I focused a little bit because it is, it is very broad and uh, would like to uh, stress your attention to glucose sensing, uh, which appear to be uh, one of the important, uh, important issue in the diabetes treatment uh, in, the, in, the last couple, in the last couple of years. So, um, in this context, uh, my presentation will take uh, these parts in which I will remind you uh, how it worked with the insulin pumps and CGM continuous glucose monitoring sensors and uh, what are the current uh, CGM technologies with this uh, dilemma, whether CGM or FGM. And uh, I would like to, uh, uh, to stress the importance of CGM on the management of diabetes and the new recommendations that are somehow taking their place uh, in our understanding of diabetes treatment and uh, that we are uh, we have in the reality of uh, diabetes treatment closed loop systems and basically what are the future the future perspectives so let's start uh, with the beginning uh, you know very well these historical slides uh, and uh, it appeared to be that it took uh, us uh, about um, 60 years or 50 years from the discovery of insulin to realize how important is the glucose monitoring. And the first self-monitoring device was introduced uh, by the 70s uh, or uh, of, of, of the last uh, century. And you have seen how big these devices and impractical were. But however, uh, then uh, when we realized that, we saw a very rapid development in this area. And uh, by uh, the year 2000, one of the first uh, uh, subcontinuous continuous glucose monitoring was introduced because technology was able then to provide a continuous glucose measurement. And this continuous glucose measurement had a number of adva uh, advantages uh, with, uh, to, to be used uh, in the existing uh, uh, devices of uh, insulin injection, uh, but also in gen generally in the treatment of uh, diabetes. So very simply, if uh, in type 1 diabetes, and that was the, this, this was the paper from 2009, very simply, if you introduce uh, uh, continuously, uh, continuous glucose management uh, measurement, uh, you can uh, get uh, the improval, uh, uh, improve the blood glucose control. And uh, uh, as you can see, uh, in comparison to the um, intermittent use of CGM and no use of CGM, and that uh, is uh, that is true and even more pronounced if the treatment. Uh, uh, goes uh, longer and longer. After three months, uh, uh, the, the difference is just very much evident in comparison to one month. So nothing very much techn technologically and uh, everything uh, like uh, uh, in, in a way how a practical, the practical physician and diabetologist sees the control in diabetes. The same happens uh, in uh, many situations in the, in, the in patients with, treated with insulin. And um, for example, when you, uh, in a traditional way, use a, a bolus uh, uh, before lunch, uh, then you will see that uh, uh, how, how the glucose uh, goes up and down, and uh, you will be able, with the use of CGM, to forecast this uh, uh, deep going down uh, of the blood glucose, which you will not be able to do uh, the, the, with, with the classical 
self-monitoring uh, of, of blood glucose with the test strips. So that enabled a lot of uh, advantages. And uh, in the study in which we participated, and it was the internet real life study, interpret, sorry, uh, real life study, we were together with um, other centers in Europe. Uh, it, it was apparent in the results of this study that sensor uses itself um, added to the uh, to the value of HbA1c, and uh, we had a greater percentage of uh, HbA1c less than seven or less than seven point five, and that this difference was more pronounced if the sensor was used more. Uh, for the study prerequisite was ten percent of the time, but uh, I mean the inclusion criteria was the ten percent of the time of sensor wearing. But however, the best results were obtained with 70% of the use of SENSA. Uh, there, are, there were also other studies uh, in which SENSA were used with insulin pump in adults with type 1 diabetes, which, which has shown similar results. And you can, if you look just at this busy slide and that just at this right column, you can see the significant differences uh, of uh, better control with the use of, uh, of uh, continuous glucose monitoring. All that was very convincing and resulted uh, a speedy development of uh, CGM technologies. And uh, this development of CGM technologies resulted in, uh, uh, in uh, the, 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 the whole spectrum of devices, which uh, had different characteristics, but all of them, uh, however, improved uh, both HB1C and the decrease is the, the number of hypoglycemic episodes. And uh, you can see um, the, the grading of them here, which, uh, which made uh, uh, at least uh, some clinical improvement regarding HB1C, but also some very important one, like uh, 1% uh, or, or even more. Also, uh, the same stood for hypoglycemic uh, episodes which were um, less pronounced, uh, and uh, the, these studies uh, served as the hallmark of uh, the importance of uh, the use of uh, uh, continuous uh, of uh, subcutaneous insulin infusion together with CGM, and resulted in a thing that uh, National Institute of Clinical Excellence uh, from UK just uh, had the, the statement some two years ago, a year and a half, that uh, so-called sensor augmented pump uh, is the pump of the future. And that uh, everything, if you would like to use this type of diabetes treatment technology, uh, then uh, you should use it with the sensor. So um, th th this is uh, something that uh, really uh, tackled uh, the, the everyday practice uh, in the treatment of this type of uh, diabetic patients. The development of glucose monitoring was um, a continuous one, uh, and uh, what uh, uh, really started, let's say, in 2006 uh, as uh, an attempt to find a device that can be practically applied, uh, went into a, a rather sophisticated way, uh, having the sensors measuring uh, at five minutes intervals, and uh, uh, at the same time, uh, the results were readable and not only readable, but there was a memory and you could uh, assess from the memory uh, the, the, the uh, changes of the blood glucose per days and you can draw very important conclusions, uh, but also you can see how was the behavior of the patients in particular days and what was the, the, the effect of the doses of insulin injecting by those days. However, uh, in the last uh, decade, uh, 10 years ago, approximately seven years ago, after this uh, beginning of the, of the, of the um, intensive development of uh, CGM, continuous glucose monitoring systems, uh, there, there was a, a sort of, uh, 
um, psychological saturation, if you wish, with uh, such a sophisticated method. And uh, there was another, uh, another approach uh, that um, favored uh, uh, sort of quick and uh, user-friendly uh, user uh, determination of blood glucose values by using so-called uh, flash glucose monitoring, which were uh, just uh, uh, very easy to use. Uh, and uh, uh, they uh, also continuously measured interstitial glucose, but did not, uh, uh, but uh, then did not uh, expose the results. So you have to use the scanner to be aware of the results. And there were some other, other aspects that I will discuss about. And uh, a number of patients uh, then turned to those, those uh, devices and there was a sort of dilemma, which one of those uh, should be, uh, sh uh, which one of those is preferable. Uh, my, my, my task is to tell you that this dilemma is a little bit artificial. Because uh, um, uh, uh, unlike uh, as a CGM, flash monitoring does not provide alarms, uh, or in the second version, it provides some of them, but uh, not uh, enough for uh, alerting the use of hypo and hyperglycemia, and does not integrate with insulin pump, uh, cannot be integrated in insulin pump devices like some CGM devices can. So in this context, uh, we can, uh, of course, we can use uh, at the same time flash glucose monitoring and the insulin pump, but this is not an integration. Uh, it, this, is, this is just a simultaneous use. And uh, so in this context, uh, it cannot influence uh, uh, insulin pump and be the basis for the further development of pump treatment. But on the other hand, uh, for, for the um, for the, the, the patients that are, uh, that are maybe not even not on insulin, uh, but uh, uh, using uh, CGM, uh, uh, using SMBG and, uh, uh, or other type of uh, glucose measurement, uh, it appears to be that FGM, uh, flash glucose monitoring, is going to re replace one day or be used in the patient's who are in fact now on SMBG, on a classical um, uh, classical test strips for the measurement of blood glucose, and uh, that there will be uh, and uh, there the place for um, the use in uh, together with uh, with uh, insulin pumps and other devices will be still uh, uh, reserved for CGM with uh, continuous display and with uh, very sophisticated methods of uh, evaluation of glucose control. Um, but uh, more than this uh, aspect uh, um, of, uh, of, of uh, the, the use of uh, continuous glucose measurement, another one came in when we did not expect it. And so this CGM uh, influence, the use of CGM influence, the, uh, recommendations for the management of diabetes, even in uh, in uh, uh, patients in patients with type one, but even in type two diabetes, and uh, introduced because we were aware, we we became aware of variations of blood glucose. Introduced another, the fourth variable of the assessment of glucose control, and that is glucose variability. Glucose variability, which was uh, important for the glucose control, but also which was important for di uh, late diabetic complications. And uh, so apart from HbA1c, uh, uh, fasting and postprandial glucose, first it was the glucose variability that uh, is usually measured with coefficient of variation of blood glucose values, but however, that uh, influenced uh, our uh, our uh, um, uh, attitude towards uh, the revitalization of the use of uh, blood glucose and not only HbA1c values in our evaluation of the control in a particular patient. That uh, uh, resulted uh, in the new recommendation, uh, not only for use of CGM but uh, for the treatment of. Uh, at least type one 
diabetes and you see how many changes were introduced in the American guidelines in the American standards of care with this uh, with this novelty and one thing that was uh, uh, that was defined by those days and um, in this era of uh, our focus on uh, cardiovascular aspects type 2 diabetes and so on uh, did not uh, attain enough attention uh, from our side and uh, but however uh, it was uh, very much known among the people who are more involved in the treatment of type 1 diabetes and so uh, by, uh, by, by uh, these years in fact a couple of years ago uh, the new guidelines for the for for the optimal treatment of at least type 1 or insulin treated patients but also for the others got two uh, very important variables and that was time in range as the number the time in which the glucose values were between 3.9 and 10 and uh, also the glucose variability so that became uh, now something uh, that uh, really should be included in every patient's report and uh, there was in, there is an international consensus in that and uh, uh, this international consensus say that uh, more than 70% of the values should be within this range and uh, less than 25% of the values should be above this range and uh, less than 5% should be in the hypo range. There are some, uh, some modifications for uh, type 2 and the patients in, in specific situations in pregnancy for example but this is the this the, this is something that was really a consequence of uh, uh, broader use of glucose sensing as the uh, as as the tech, the new technology in in uh, type 1 diabetes so uh, going uh, the same way uh, another consequence of the use of uh, glucose sensing was an ability to um, produce so-called uh, in reality and in real practice and even in outpatient practice uh, the, uh, the closed loop systems which uh, resulted uh, which was done in many ways uh, but uh, having in fact the signal from continuous glucose monitoring on one side and then insulin injecting device on the other side that are, that are connected with the control algorithm. This control algorithm uh, is still the point of discussion, uh, which one is the best. Uh, and uh, what was achieved is that the hypoglycemia uh, now could be reduced uh, to a very, very low range. However, we cannot yet... Uh, tackle too much uh, hyperglycemic values because uh, we uh, uh, the, uh, we are not still at the same the same point regarding the uh, the, the the control of hyperglycemic values but the, the, there is the uh, continuous and very fast uh, development of those devices and uh, the, the the newest one uh, uh, the latest one uh, it, it, in an advanced hybrid closed loop system uh, uh, really uh, includes not only uh, automatic correction boluses and uh, uh, some uh, uh, can, uh, and uh, the correction for mistake carb counting, but also the possibility to to um, upload according to the previous results data sharing and uh, software upgrades. Which uh, uh, is uh, which enabled this system to be used uh, in the outpatient uh, service. And finally, what are the future perspectives? The future perspectives definitely uh, 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 are by the sort of consensus, unwritten consensus of everybody, is that more advances are needed to improve sensor accuracy especially in the hyperglycemic area and the improvement of this technology once you uh, you uh, in include it in a particular patient and of course to reduce costs because still the uh, the, the the development of uh, as for diabetes technology in general but also uh, in this area uh, the uh, the glucose sensing and uh, its use 
in a regular practice is still very costly, especially for the, uh, the, the, the countries that are in transition or, or uh, less uh, potent to finance their healthcare system. More research is required in order to use CGM during pregnancy, in dialysis and in critically ill patients because it hasn't been uh, evaluated yet. And there is the whole, the whole uh, 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 spectrum of uh, attempts to find so something like non-invasive non glucose sensors, which would assess, uh, which would be epidermal, or uh, assess uh, other other fluids than uh, interstitial glucose fluid, and uh, th that is now uh, th that is now under debate. However without uh, uh, practically applied uh, uh, achievable uh, results. But however, uh, the, this, the, the results until now says that CGM technology will likely improve metabolic control on one side and quality of life for people with diabetes. And uh, as a center of new technology in this area, and that is uh, something that brings an added value. Uh, this slide just illustrates how uh, how broad are the efforts uh, to find new blood glucose sensing and uh, new devices that can uh, produce better and more comfortable glucose uh, control. Uh, however, still uh, most of the successful uh, successful uh, attempts are in the area on invasive or minimally invasive glucose sensors. The other ones, like non-invasive, are numerous, but still without uh, practically ap applicable results. There is another area in which our um, partners from IT industry uh, uh, try, to, try to help us a lot, and that is to get the results from the periphery and to introduce a sort of cloud as a, as a memory for the future uh, evaluation, what would be the best uh, rate uh, of insulin infusion. This looks like science fiction, but uh, however, um, it, is, it is applicable in many situations and still uh, is one of the most uh, paradoxically, most practical way to resolve the problem of unsolved problem, how to tackle with hyperglycemia, which is still uh, and, uh, which is still on the agenda, as I, as I previously said. So finally, the future trends would be integration of apps with the assistance for patient uh, feedback, connection to everyday items, and the, U and the switch to the use with MDI. And then the, uh, the future trends should be increased duration of age with less calibration, simple handling, and better precision. And finally, a broader use of a closed loop, which would lead us hopefully to artificial pancreas. Thank you very much.